mechanical engineer, and this is my shoe cabinet. In today's video, we're going to be building a shoe cabinet that is plain large enough to hold 20 or more pairs of shoes and has a separate compartment set aside to hold boots. And the best part is, is you can build the whole thing for under 80 bucks. So let's get started. Ooh la la. Fair warning, there are slightly easier ways to build what I'm about to show you, but I truly believe that this way ends up looking the best by far. So to begin, I went down to Home Depot and picked up two 4x8 sheets of pine plywood. These boards are really nice, well put together boards and only cost about 30 bucks each. And although we do need both sheets, we are going to have a decent amount left over for future projects. So now that we have our boards, I'm going to begin by taking one of them and cutting two pieces out of it. We're going to want the first one to be 41 and a quarter inches tall, of course 4 feet wide, and the second one to be 35 and a quarter inch tall. I know these are weird measurements, but it'll all make sense in a minute, so let's cut them out. Perfect. Now we're going to want to cut these boards into as many 3 quarter inch wide strips as possible. I cut my boards in half first, but that's only because it makes them a little bit easier to handle. Wonderful. Now we're at the point where things are going to start making a little bit more sense. So what we're going to want to do is take those strips we just cut out and begin to glue and nail them together in a pattern very similar to this. Of course, plywood side sticking out. We're going to want the 41 and a quarter inch ones on top and the 35 and a quarter inch ones on the side. And actually the reason why they're 41 and 35 and one quarter inch thick is because when they're put together with these three quarter inch thick strips, they actually become 42 and 36, aka three feet and three and a half feet. So after we finish gluing and nailing the first level, we'll repeat the whole process for the second level, but in reverse. So instead of placing the second level like this, we'll instead place them like this, making sure to cover up the joints. This will not only look better, but also make the unit a whole lot stronger. Now one other thing before we get started, we're going to want this thing to be about 16 inches thick. And so for the first four levels and the last four levels, we're going to want to use the 41 inch long pieces on the sides as well so that they stick out like legs. If that sounds complicated, I promise it's not. It'll make a whole lot more sense once you see it. So let's get started. And here are the legs I was talking about. As you can see, each leg has two solid pieces that run the full length of the cabinet, and then I filled in the spaces with two more blocks. Now comes the fun part. Now it's time to start cutting channels. So now we're going to want to take our router and begin to cut channels into the side of the cabinet for the shelves to be able to slide in. We're of course going to want the channels to be about three quarter inches thick and about a quarter inch deep. And so after dividing the inside of the cabinet by three, it looks like we're going to want to put a shelf about every eight and a half inches. Just like that. So every shelf gives us about eight inches of space to store the shoes, which should fit most shoes. But what if you want to store boots? They're not going to fit in these shelves unless you put them in there sideways, and that's going to look kind of sloppy. Well, after thinking about it for a little while, I've decided that I'm not going to cut a channel in the bottom left side, but instead in the bottom center. That way we can build something like this. We have two full shelves on the top, two half shelves on the bottom, and then a large open space where we can put boots. The only thing we're going to have to do special is cut a channel in two of the shelves, but that's later on. I really like this design and I think it's going to work rather well, so let's get started. With all the channels cut, I'm now going to go ahead and give the inside of the cabinet a thorough sanding because it'll be difficult to do that past this point. Next, I'm going to cut out four two inch wide plywood strips to serve as a face for the front of the cabinet. I'm of course going to glue and nail it down like we did the body, but I'm also going to dowel pin the corners to make sure it's as strong as possible. Now we can begin to cut out the shelves. We'll of course start by cutting out the two top shelves. 
making sure to cut a channel on the bottom of the bottom shelf that matches the channel on the bottom of the cabinet. Just like this. We can then cut out a vertical piece that slides into these channels, making sure to cut a channel into the middle of that that matches the channel on the side of the cabinet. Just like this. Now after we cut down and slide in the last little half shelf, we can glue and nail all the shelves down so they don't move. Then cut down this quarter inch thick sheet of plywood that's going to serve as the cabinet's back. And glue and nail that down as well. Congratulations, look at this thing, we're almost done. But before we move on to the next and final stage, I think it'd be a good idea to take a short break from building to sand the whole outside of this thing down really well. Ooh, smoother than a baby's face. Thought I was gonna say bottom, didn't you, you sicko? Now there's really only about two things left to do, and that is make the doors and stain everything. So to get started on the doors, I'm going to take two identical plywood boards that are eight and three quarters by 21 and three quarters, and glue and nail three quarter inch square plywood strips, just like we use for the body, around the door panels until they make up the gap. And although this is not as important because we could cut these out later, I'm going to intentionally leave a small hole towards the top center of the doors that we can use as handles. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it because it will in a minute. So let's go ahead and get started. Beautiful. As you can see, here are the handles slash door poles I was talking about cutting out. And I also made sure to cut a five degree angle at the front of both doors where they meet up just to help make sure they can properly close. And so with that, everything is now built and it is staining time. For stain, I'm going to be using Midwax Ebony 2718, but it is a free color, so use whatever country you want to. Let's stain. Wow, this is a really tight fit. Now that the stain is dry, all that's left to do is to take a few hinges and mount the doors. Bloop, bloop. Then just install a few lockty doos to help keep the doors closed. A lockty do. And with that, the cabinet is now finally complete and ready for shoes. And so there you have it, how to build your own shoe cabinet for under 80 bucks. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And we're going out to see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.